Hey guys, and holy Jesus, the entire stock market was edging on the border of a fall, and fall it did during that last couple of minutes. SPY, NASDAQ, Dow Jones fell off and plunged hard, dragging pretty much all the stocks with them. Crypto started slipping too, with Bitcoin leading the dip. What happened? What does this mean for us? What led to this and how to cope? These are the questions that science still can't answer but the ones I think I can clarify for you. Let us dive deep into the neat and gritty, because there is no form of introduction good enough to make sense of anything that has happened today. Before we start, let me quickly state that I am not a financial advisor, and that all content discussed in this channel is simply information gathered that I deem important for people to know, so that they can make informed decisions. All efforts are aimed to better understand the nature of the current market in anticipation of the greatest squeeze in financial history. Let's dive right in. Back in the day, people used to think I was mentally handicapped, people used to complain that my self-deprecating humor was the lowest form of entertainment. That stuck with me, and I can now vilify myself, because after today's trading session, it is abundantly clear I am definitely not the lowest form of entertainment. Stocks closed very low today, after staging what many wrongly assumed was a comeback about a very volatile set of trading sessions for the last couple of days and weeks. New earning reports came out, showing a series of upbeat earnings along with less than terrible news regarding jobless claims. Then, when calm, tranquility and hope seemed to emerge their head, the markets turned red. The rebound wasn't meant to be, and this is what I've been preparing you for during all the days. We officially entered what experts called a correction territory a couple days ago, but many hoped we just graced through it only to come out emerging, and to those that made bets on this belief, you are about to be in a world of hurt, and I shall see your losses tonight on Wall Street bets. Nasdaq Composite ended down 1.3%, after rallying earlier in the day and running and swinging past 3% earlier today. The S&P closed 1.1% lower and the Dow plummeted 313 points. With Nasdaq failing to reverse losses, they have now officially set a defined 10% drop since its high. We have a couple tech companies giving their earnings reports after hours, but that will not matter, even if they are stellar. Investors right now have something else in mind other than great earnings. They want to know if others are selling, and the anticipation of worsening market conditions is only going to amplify losses from here on out. We are in bear territory. This will be the fifth week where the Dow posts a loss too. Netflix, which was highly anticipated, with many bull investors hoping it would unleash a bullish rally, missed their own targets, and the company had a sell-off as a result, further hurting the indexes. So what exactly caused this precipice in the stock market? Let's break this down atomically. First, the Fed is currently having a really bad money, because everyone is asking for information, or rather any sign of hope of good things to come, but they are remaining very hush, which is not good because they would be advertising positive numbers if they had them. The Fed has a big meeting next week and no immediate changes are expected to happen. Interest rate expectations are one of the three big reasons why we fell down, as every major institution and investor are dreading what's to come. To add to the Fed's inability to curtail problems, weekly claims for unemployment benefits rose more than expected last week, climbing to 286,000. This reflects the layoffs related to Omicron as well as season's employment changes and adjustments. The next big thing that caused this to happen, which some of you have been talking about, are options. $3.3 trillion worth of options expire tomorrow, and that is a lot of money that was always going to make a big reaction in the market. Many have been asking me about a big move by GameStop and AMC because of this, and I don't know how to feel about that in regards to these two stocks, since poor market conditions give a lot of leverage to shorters to easily take away from a stock's momentum potential. But for the overall stock market with trillions of dollars worth in options on the line, yeah, there was no doubt it was going to cause and amplify some changes in stocks. And the third and last big reason that gave us this market fall, because it is not yet a crash, are cycles. I am not going to talk about market cycles on this particular video, because it would make it too long, but essentially, what goes up must come down. I have said this many times before as the harder they grow, the harder they fall. I have talked about how investors' expectation for growth are changing, and there are many factors influencing this shift in psychology. This is influencing to a considerable degree the amplitude of the business cycle. They want more than just big numbers by companies, they are looking at profit margins and real growth in customers rather than just big numbers. Take Netflix today for example. They reported growth, but it wasn't up to their expectations, and as such, Wall Street did not like that. As we progress out of this pandemic, 
Investors aren't looking at just positive numbers for validation that things are getting better, but rather looking for which company has the biggest growth potential. With the Fed's upcoming price hikes, many investors are not boding well with the state of affairs and pressing that sell button a lot more frequent. So, now that we have the three major reasons that explain today's fall, let's talk about what this means for us. What needs to happen now is patience with the market. Though I think we will have a correction, I've been calling this for over a month now, we are not headed into a market crash. So a market crash squeeze is not going to be produced out of current circumstances as they are currently set right now. At this current stage, we are entering a period where investors are learning to cope with the fact that the Fed will implement changes that could hurt the short-term bottom line. They don't like it, they are pouting and selling, but they won't stop buying either, because they know this is momentary, and because of this is that we are not crashing. What is happening is standard in economics, so relax and sip a drink, because we need to get comfortable with the color red for the short-term foreseeable future, as I have been saying. What this means for us is expect volatility, more red days, GameStop to potentially break below 20 and AMC below 15. Crypto is going to be hurting a lot too. For those holding, just continue to hold, because after this phase of the cycle comes the rally where everything springs up, and anyone paper handing is only going to realize serious losses right now. The best way to cope is to understand what is going on, except that you and I can't change it, and that being uncomfortable is part of the process to making money. If you can't handle it, I seriously suggest you reconsider stock investment as a way to make money. I bought $5,000 worth of shares today, amplifying my GameStop vault by a small but considerable amount, as well as entering some other positions which I know for a fact will return and yield some good profits, which I will reinvest back in GameStop. Let's talk about AMC and GameStop. Both companies are performing well as businesses, improving and growing. Nothing that I have seen on the news suggests dark times ahead, so I continue to be bullish on both. From a stock price angle, we getting hammered down bad and I love it. I'm sorry. I have to admit this because I am a degenerate, but though I love it when the price goes up, I like it even more when it comes down. I bought so much GME, more than double what I would have been able to two months ago for the same amount. The ones adding with no intention of selling are literally increasing the floor price. I get that watching the charts isn't fun, because it isn't, and that is what I want to briefly talk about. I made a very controversial video months ago talking about hedge funds and their business model. I explained that the best case scenario for them is increasing the times where we trade horizontal for long periods of time, because it actually makes the stock boring for newcomers and induces anxiety in many holders. As such, it is one of the strategies used to discard of many retail investors while simultaneously evading newcomers from investing, because they can proposition them with other more volatile stocks at particular moments. Meme stocks grew out of popularity after their majestic run last year, and many people stayed after they started falling down in price. And though as diamond-handed as you all are, some of you are still getting pressed by watching your investment fall, and want to get out already. Listen to me, you were lied to by most people on social media. Meme stocks are not a quick play to get rich. It is slow, it will have so many periods where it is boring that you might as well just buy and turn on my video notifications in the charts as well. This is not a quick get in and rich, this will be super slow and boring and annoying at times, but that's the cost of the play. Influencers pumped the stock for hype, and those that did already moved on to other plays, because they sold selling you lies. They made you believe MOAS was impending and to happen soon so that you would buy and so that they could make money off of clicks and actively selling meme stocks. As such, many of you have a bit of a warped perspective as to what this play means for you. It is why I always say every meme stock investor needs to do two primary things. One is consistently educate themselves as to what is happening in the stock market and with their stocks and to develop their very own trading plan, so that they aren't putting every cent they make at work on a stock that will not yield a positive result that makes you feel good. We buy and we will fall until we don't. This is the nature of the play. Some day trade like me, others hold other investments and just balance out what they make across different stocks including AMC and GME. Others just buy AMC and GME with smart control over impulses. It is a matter of strategically adapting an investment plan by which works around your needs. Be smart and be ambitious, play to what works best for you, because no YouTuber is going to be able to make a generalized plan that works for everyone all the same. I will buy and continue doing so until we mow us or until I die, and I am being honest. These stocks either moon or go out of business or I die or whatever happens, I am not selling a penny unless I get what I want. 
I acknowledge what this stock means for my portfolio and what it means for my money, and I have a trading plan that works to undo some of the losses I know I will see as we march forward getting more price suppressions. Some of you will leave, but I know the vast majority of my audience isn't, so let's take opportunity of this dip and get richer in the future by going all out on it. I hope to have been able to explain everything that happened, let me know in the comments how you feel about all I have said, since I want to get your opinion on this matter. Let's now talk about today. The Fed submitted over $1.678 trillion in reverse repo operations today. Dark pool trades for AMC accounted for 51% of the total volume today, while dark pool trades for GameStop accounted for 44% of the total volume today. AMC had a larger amount of buy orders than its sell orders, with GameStop also having a larger amount of buy orders than sell orders. Now, let's talk about performance. AMC traded bearishly, losing over 1% for the day. It began trading fairly aggressive during the pre-market, trying to move past 18.80 and constantly testing and breaking past the VWAP. Upon market opening, AMC quickly feel from 18.75 to 18.24, but then rallied up and ran all the way to 20.16. After this run, it began falling back down, breaking past the VWAP and finding support at 18.90. It maintained position below the VWAP, and at one point breaking above it and running to 19.69 before falling back down. As we heading towards the closing of normal hours, AMC started breaking support, being dragged by the indexes as was every other stock for the most part. AMC closed at 18.07, below the VWAP. As for what to expect for tomorrow, AMC will find support at 17.80, 16.80 and 16.34. Resistance will be met at 19, 19.80 and 20.60. AMC had a nasty ugly fall and the stock is oversold by every single indicator, but its after-hours performance so far does not leave much hope for a strong bounce back. It is without a doubt shorters will want to keep this below 20 by the end of the day tomorrow, so let's hope we beat them to it. It's practically impossible to predict probability for tomorrow because of how we ended today and the circumstances that caused it. GameStop traded bearishly, losing over 3% for the day. Look at how they massacred my boy. The stock opened to a run from 108 to 115.20, but then fell, breaking below the VWAP and finding some support around 108.50. As we neared the end of the day, we started falling, and GME ended up closing at 102.67, below the VWAP. As for what to expect for tomorrow, GameStop will find support at 100, 67.50 and 93. Resistance will be met at 104, 107 and 115. GameStop is set to fall below 100, it actually already did during the after-hours performance, which means get ready for a battle to try to end the day above it tomorrow. I am super thankful to shorters for the opportunity to get GME below the $100 mark again, you guys are the third best thing to happen to me after my YouTube audience and Halo. Like I said, it's practically impossible to predict probability for tomorrow because of how we ended today and the circumstances that caused it. And that is all I have to say for the day. Come join my Discord, link is in the description below. We have reached almost a thousand members and are having a blast over there. For those interested in alerts for scalping and day trading, I have set up a service there as well so come check it out. Let me know if you have any questions and what you thought about the video. Let me know if you bought today's dip or if you are waiting to see if it falls any further. Thank you all for the love and support you have shown me. I hope to see you tomorrow on the next one. If you want to support this channel, I have a Patreon link in the description as well as some one-time donation links for Cash App and PayPal. Thank you again for being a part of this channel. I will continue striving for better content. Enjoy the rest of your day, keep on buying the dip into the moon.